In this video, we'll look at an 80 day plan to get to the 99th percentile in CAT. Some of you would be just starting your preparation. Some of you have been preparing already. Uh, this video gives you an idea on how to pace your or rather smartly utilize the remaining 80 days over here to CAT 2023, right? So first up, let's address the fundamental question. Uh, does 99th percentile mean 99 percentage? And I think pretty much all of you know the answers for this. The answer is no. Nobody gets 99% marks in the exam, all right? Uh, nobody gets, in fact, 95% or even 90% of the marks. The total is 198 right now, and 90 percentage means 180 odd marks. And to my knowledge, nobody really has gotten these in the last couple of years. If at all, there could be one or two. Um, and definitely each of these colleges have way more seats than those one or two, right? So 99th percentile over here simply means that your score is greater than or equal to the scores of 99% of the CAT test takers, right? Um, so what do you need to get to this? How many marks do you really need to score, right? It's quite simple. Uh, looking at the past several years data, if you get 50% or more marks, that is out of 198, you get a 99 or 100 plus, you're pretty much there, right? You're pretty much there and you're pretty much at a 99 percentile. You can never predict the difficulty level of the CAT question paper, but taking the past as a yardstick, if you get a 50 plus percentage marks, or at least in your mock test, you're at that, you can safely say that you're at the 99 plus percentile from a CAT perspective. So with the 80 days available, is it going to be your best preparation or your best CAT exam ever? Probably not. Is it going to be a good enough an exam or a good enough a preparation to make sure you get to that 99 percentile and get into one of the top colleges? There's a very good chance if you make good use of the at least about 50 to 60 of the remaining 80 days. Your preparations, there are going to be ups and downs. Not every day can you prepare in a robotic manner. There'll be days where you'll be able to prepare a little extra. There'll be days where you simply couldn't touch. There was a lot of work or college, right? You just need to uh, pace your preparation well. So a quick look at, you know, the marks in the percentile in CAT 2021 and 2022. That will serve as some comfort for a lot of you, right? 80 percentile, which is a pretty reasonable percentile to get into calls from some of the top 50 colleges. And uh, it was just 45 marks out of 198. And this mark in school level and people would have been beating you, right? And here, 45 out of 198 is a pretty decent score, right? And if you want to go in for a great score, and down there it is, 97 out of 198, less than 50 percent, right? 97 out of 198 is getting you a 99th percentile in the CAC 2021 paper. The individual sections, of course, 80 percentile is the bare minimum requirement for most of the colleges, right, under the general category. So 22, 14, and 11, those are the easier ones to achieve. The, the, the bigger part is the grand total, right? What was it in CAT 2022? So slightly uh, tougher than the previous year, right? Uh, the, the marks dropped. 37 marks was enough to get to the 80th percentile. The previous year, it was in the 40s, right? So 99th percentile over here was just 84 marks out of 198. Right, so not even 45 percent, it was quite low, right? So, um, that's to give you an idea, right? This exam is not like your school exams, not like your college exams where you'll be targeting full 100 out of 100. This is an exam where you get 50 percent of the marks, you, you choose the questions, um, the, where, where which are easy, which you are good at, which you're strong at, and prepare accordingly. You're going to be doing well. So, for the rest of the 80 days, do you need to prepare everything in an intense manner? Probably not, especially if you're starting your preparation right now. You've got to go in for targeted preparation, right? So what do you focus on over here? Now, before we even come to that, we need to understand that, you know, um, you might be strong in some areas. It could be VARC, some might be strong in QA. Now, wherever you're strong and make sure that your score is really, really good, right? If you're strong in VRC, make sure you have, you're in the top line over there. You get a 45 plus score, you get about 15 marks in DILR or more, probably can get it over 24 or 25. And yes, there's just several ways in which you could get to that 90 to 100 score, right? So don't um, go in with a crazy figure right now. In the immediate next mock, don't be targeting 100 marks or 90 marks. We have about 80 days to go. You need to pace your preparation. There has to be growth in your mock results over a period of time. And these should be your target numbers for where you want to be 80 days from now and not tomorrow, right? So how do you prep smart with the limited time available, right? So we have 24 questions in VARC, four cases in DILR. Uh, let me call it four cases instead of 20 questions and 22 questions in quant or QA, all right? 99th percentile here is around 30 to 45. You get um, 25 to 30 and 30 to 45. It put you in a good position, 
right? So what do we need to um, get in VARC? About 30 to 45, uh, which means you get attempt 16 questions with um, and, and a little more of non-RCs, that's going to be pretty good, right? So where do you get these 16 questions for VARC? Reading comprehension, right? The chunk of a two-third of the paper are from reading comprehension. So these are the must prep areas. The must prep are the ones where you need to go intense with your preparation because the volume of questions or the number of questions from these areas are going to be high. Likewise, for DILR, you have three plus cases from these. Uh, pretty much you have a graph-based case uh, every, uh, every year pretty much, right? One-off years, you don't have them. Uh, matching numerical reasoning and interpretative tables, right? Different people will be calling it differently. You can just visit mockcat.com and just look at the categories we have and look at some of the questions, you'll have an idea. So numerical reasoning and interpretative tables uh, are pretty much the major areas where uh, CAT is focusing pretty much on the DLR section. The quant part, right? Arithmetic and algebra is where they test you the most. Out of 22 questions, more than half of them are going to be coming from here. You need to go intense with your preparation. The good to prep are going to be summary over here for VARC because it's more or less an extension of reading comprehension uh, in same lines, but just a short paragraph given to you instead. Uh, Venn diagram over here because um, it's been a while since a Venn diagram case came um, in, in, in a proper manner. You can say the CAT 2020 paper had that. 21 and 22 didn't really um, have a dedicated Venn diagram. Some of them could have been solved with Venn diagram um, and otherwise, right? So you could expect something around Venn diagram this year never really can predict the paper, right? And when it comes to quant, uh, geometry, right? So geometry is the next area, it's, it's good to prep. If you have more time and you want to spend more time, you've mastered arithmetic and algebra, go in for geometry because next um, um, highest number of questions turn off from there. Then prep the rest of it, para jumbles and sentence insertion. If that's not our bread and butter. We didn't really learn it very well in school. Uh, but if you're good at that, it's very good. You have about five questions from there. Uh, rest of LR, right, because anything can come up, uh, but the majority is going to be from the upper part and numbers and modern maths, of course, as well. Right, so how do you go around with this preparation? I don't want to stop over there. Let's understand how you need to prep for quant intensely. Arithmetic and algebra I spoke about. You need to complete the lessons. By lessons, I don't mean the text lessons because uh, text lessons contain steps. Those are the steps you write down in your school exams or college exams. They're not happy with the final answer alone. In CAT, the final answer is enough. The steps don't matter. So the video lessons are important. Go through the videos, understand the concept part of it as to how you can skip a lot of steps and quickly get the answer, right? So video lessons, concept videos to summarize the entire lesson. And then the speed concepts module, which is something we designed and prepared over here, primarily by me, about a collection of about 600 to 700 questions um, across all the modules. Now these speed concepts are pretty much a bridge between um, the lesson and the CAT questions. In the sense, a lot of students keep saying that, hey, I've gone through the lesson, I've gone through the concept videos, I know the concepts, but I'm not getting the answer. I don't know how to apply, I applied it incorrectly, right? So that's because uh, a lot of students feel they know the concepts once they've gone through it, but they've, but they've somewhere missed out on the finer aspects of it. Any concept will also have conditions associated, right? Uh, you need to make sure you're applying the concepts properly. That's the bridge. Speed concepts over here, which is something unique to mock CAT. Answer those, make sure you're at a 90% accuracy. And I can say for sure that you'll be answering any of the easy or medium questions which are gonna turn up in CAT. You're ready for them, right? So speed concepts becomes a very, very important module. Now practice questions, daily questions, or quizzes, past questions we give out to our students and clear doubts in the classes. Of course, all of these are important. And a very important aspect over here when you're preparing for these sections is doubt clearing. Make sure that your doubts are answered by the right person somebody who has been the crack cat and knows the quickest approach to solving this. We cannot be using the school approaches here. The rest of the geometry numbers and modern maths, do I neglect them? Absolutely not. You need to be ready with the lessons, concept videos and speed concepts alone, that's enough, right? You don't, if, if you have time, go in for more, practice questions and rest, but this is enough. And the reason why I need you to do this is, what if easy questions are gonna turn up from these sections, right, or these modules? You never know which chapters the easy questions are going to come from. And CAT is one such exam where all of the questions have the same marks and you will have easy and tough questions. You need to pick the ones which are easy for you and attempt them. Right? So therefore, a strategy is very important for the marks and sectionals. 50% of the marks or 50% of the questions is what you should target. 688 strategy is what we've been advocating. You can refer to those videos. 
first six questions in the first 10 minutes I'll look at, pick whatever I can attempt and go for it. Eight for the next 15 minutes and the last eight questions for the last 15 minutes. Pick and choose and do it so that you don't miss out on easy questions at all. Now, how do I prefer DILR? As I said, three plus cases are going to be turning up from these matching numerical reasoning, interpretative tables and graphs, which include pie charts, bar graph, spider chart, or lines and XY, right? So the video lessons and live classes are important. Now, DILR is one such area which is common for all of you because none of you had it at school, right? Or none of you had it in college as well. Probably a bit for aptitude uh, training for placements or something or some other exam, but not at the level at which, you know, CAT is going to be setting these cases. Uh, so therefore, uh, this is a common ground for all of you. And the unique part with DILR is it's not like quant. You don't have formulae, concepts and all of that. A lot of it is experiential learning. You need to practice, practice the right way and ensure you are solving it the correct way as well. Right. So the remaining areas over here uh, also are important as when you have time, make sure you complete these as well. When it comes to mocks and sectionals, you need to be taking it or rather reviewing it correctly as well. Right. You take a mock test, make sure you review all of them even the unattempted cases. And during a mock test, do not fear. Pick and choose a case if you find it to be easy. If it seems easy, take it up, right? Do not double think and think that, you know, oh, the question setter might be, or exam setter might be setting a difficult case in an easy way and all of that. Most cases, what seems easy is easy and go for it. Now, how to prep for verbal? Now, verbal, simple, right? So reading comprehension is what we said. You're gonna get, be getting four passages, go for it. but how do you prepare for that? I've seen so many students who say that uh, reading comprehension passages, I'm either getting all four correct or all wrong, right? It's erratic. That's because you've never really learned it the right way. You're not gonna be given, given direct questions like which of the following points is mentioned in the second paragraph? No, that's at school level. So here you're gonna be given questions like, you know, which of the following if true will invalidate the author's assumption about uh, inadequacy. We need to understand where inadequacy is mentioned. Probably the word won't be mentioned. You need to understand the context of the passage. And you need to understand the author's assumption over there. So the author's point of view is very, very important. Right? There's a lot of places where you get reading links, which are useful for CAT. But here we provide you the reading links and the point of view of the author. Now that is something you should be able to summarize in your own way. Right? So just refer to the point of view section, which you see over here. And it's really, really useful for you. Right, so videos and live classes are very important. You need to understand the techniques used by us. Uh, Sanjana has completely designed this over here. It will be quite useful. Just log into MockCat with a link given in the description. Um, what do you target? You target a 75% accuracy in RCs. Don't chase a 100% accuracy, right? Three out of four correct, uh, be happy, right? Uh, likewise for summary, two out of three correct, about 6-7% accuracy, you gotta be happy. Then you need to push for attempts or speed. Do not target speed before getting your accuracy right. Now, sentence insertion uh, parajumbles or jumble paragraphs, just go in, right? Lessons and practice, because five out of 24 come from here. Go in for the majority prep, right? Once again, with mocks and sectionals, be clear. I've seen a lot of students going after the type in the answer questions because uh, there's no negative over here. I'm scared, you know, verbal is not my strong suit. I'll play safe. No, type in the answer questions, no negatives, but you're wasting something called time. Right? It's better if there are four options. I know the answer is in one of them. Right? So just target RC is reading comprehension passages and summaries over here. Now the mock strategy is very, very important, right? It's the last part over here. You need to take mocks and sectionals as soon as possible. I've seen a lot of students who start preparation late. They defer this because they're scared of it. No. Uh, don't get demotivated. The first mock test serves as if some yardstick as to where you stand right now. Set meaningful targets. Now, what are these meaningful targets? The realistic or low numbers, right? Hey, uh, people should be, I mean, I just told you the target 100 marks and you can get it. Yeah, but you can't be setting a target of 100 marks for the next test. If you got 15 marks, 20 marks, I, I've had students, right, who got 15 or 20 for three months to go for the exam and yes, and then they worked their way up. They started preparing in a meaningful manner and, and they got to a 90 plus score. Right, so you need to set meaningful targets, right? Realistic or even low targets. De stress yourself. This is a test where if you're going to have stress during the test, you can't be focusing on the question, you're just going to get stressed out, it's not going to get you marks. The test strategy, therefore, is uh, very important. If you keep your cool, keep calm, you're going to be able to find the easy and questions which you can solve quickly, right? 
that is what you have to go for that's what this exam is about this exam is not about getting full marks perfect attempt and all of that everybody spends time on questions they get stuck in all of that including me all right so you just need to keep your calm pick the easier quick questions so go in with a low target with the mocks especially not with the final exam right and ensure that your test strategy is perfect uh, at the end of every mock test you need to analyze your performance you need to understand the mistakes a lot of students have seen in the past right so they just take a mock and immediately take the next mock to hope that you know and with the hope that you know, it will be higher score or probably close to the 100 marks they take back to back mocks without even reviewing and analyzing and understanding where they made mistakes don't make that mistake uh, the live classes, right, learn, in case any of you are interested, you can just sign up on the link below and just uh, reach out to us and we'll be happy to explain as to what we have here. And uh, sign up at mockat.com and get, get access to a lot of free resources over there, uh, which is going to really help you with your cat prep, yeah. Uh, work on your anxiety, um, your, your silly mistakes and, you know, the fear of failure. Now, for those of you who have that, you need to understand that, you know, this exam is for the fearless, right, those who don't really care too much. You just go in over there and give it. Again, um, two ways, um, several ways in which you can track it, right? And uh, to broadly put it, there are two parts. One is preparation. The other is test taking. If your preparation is really good, your test taking is average or below par, you'll still be fine. But if your preparation is okay, you're starting late. But if your test taking is good, the way you take your mocks and everything, you can work your way to that 99 plus percentile, right? So this is key over here. Uh, you need to, you need to, you need to be stress free. Right, so the key takeaways over here for you, first up, as we've seen, you need to prep smart. The key areas we've given you over here, please focus on those. No shortcuts over here, right? No, no direct formulae, I'm going to memorize stuff and go and apply it now. Go in for the concepts you're learning, understand how to apply the concepts. The speed concepts are really important, especially in quant. Um, the mocks, right, the test taking part, which I spoke about, it's not just preparation, it's also about how you take this test. Prepare well, take the test well. And yes, you're going to be looking, uh, you, you're going to be getting a 